hello. Welcome back to another episode of This Drafty House. Um, it has been a while. Um, I didn't post a video in July because July was just one of those months. Um, and here we are on the something day of August. August 6th. Wow. Um, yeah, I am, <laughs> I'm Lindsay. Um, I am a small business owner located in Ontario. I have an online shop where I, um, I dye and I sell yarn. Um, but this space is for me to share the things that I love to do in my spare time. Um, not that I have a lot because I do have two young kids, but um, as you know from previous videos or if this is your first time here, I, um, I have found reading again and I am just loving it. Uh, so far this year I've read 80 books, <laughs> um, which is just wild to me. And I have a lot of stuff to talk about in terms of books with you guys because I missed um, July's video which is usually like a June recap and then I have my July recap so there's a lot I'm running out of I, I need more bookshelves at this point because I also have bookshelves in our bedroom those are full these are becoming full because I also have my other hobbies on here um, and I'm starting to knit a little bit more. Um, I'm also, I pulled up my sewing machine this week, um, but that will be for the next video. But I'm going to start with the yarn stuff because the books are going to take up a majority of the video. Um, so I previously shared this whip. Um, with you guys and my crochet hooks in there. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, coming along really nicely. Um, I'm pretty much ready to start the ribbing, I think. Um, but this is my hand dyed Surrey, Surrey Alpaca. I'm holding it double, and the pattern is the Ranunculus sweater by Knit Cafe. Midori? Midori? Midori High Rose, I believe. Um, just without any of the detailing. And then I'm kind of like working a fade. So, is this the front or the back? Yeah, this is the front. Um, so, like I said, it's, I haven't blocked it, so I'm pretty confident that it's ready for bottom ribbing. And then I th think for the sleeves, I'm going to go to about here. Um, and then add the ribbing and I think it's really pretty I think it'll be really fun to wear um, with like a pair of high-waisted pants so I don't know I haven't worked on it in a little bit but maybe maybe I'll finish that up this week who knows probably not um, the other project that I have started and has been taking up a lot of my time and I, I wouldn't say like a lot of my time, but I'm trying to do a little bit every day. Um, I previously crocheted a blanket seven years ago, and it is a special blanket for me because I st it started out as a mood blanket, and it's kind of like at the time it, temperature blankets were huge, um, but I just didn't really feel like having to monitor the weather every single day so instead I decided to do a mood blanket and just picked colors based off of my mood for that day or it, it essentially turned into just the colors that I liked that day um, I started out so good with it and then we got into a car accident and I broke my shoulder and so I could not obviously work on it couldn't do anything couldn't work um, and then eventually my physiotherapist was like, I want to start working crochet into your exercises and I want you to do five minutes a day. I want you to do 10 minutes a day. Anyways, 
I ended up finishing the blanket that year because I also became pregnant with Otis and now the kids fight over it and they asked me um, if I could make another one uh, so they wouldn't have to fight over it. So I started working on it but the stipulation that I gave them was that they had to help me. Um, and so their job is uh, try every day to get each of them to pick three colors because it is, um, so it's a sunburst granny square. And you could find the pattern on YouTube. Um, you can find it on Pinterest. You can just Google it. It's out there. Um, but they look like this. Change the focus here. So this is what they look like. And then you make them into a square. But these are the centers and so they have to pick the three colors and they have to pick the order so like one two three and so nick is picking them too i haven't picked a single one and i'm up to about 30 centers i think and i've picked the joining color i used all acrylic yarn for the first blanket because this was like seven years ago it's before i started my business so i'm now using all of my own yarn um, minus the joining color but I decided that one is white and I wanted to do a contrast so I chose a dark joining color and this is the Dererum Natura the Gilead, Gilead color um, or base sorry it's a worsted and this is the Darjeeling color and I think it's really pretty um, so I've worked out that and I'm hoping that I have enough to join. I'm going based off of what I did for that blanket and I think I did 88 I think um, and then whatever yarn I have left after I've joined them all um, and finished the centers will I'm gonna do like a colorful border I think that's the plan anyways but we're gonna like see how it goes um, so I'm really enjoying that. The kids are really, they ask every day, is the blanket done yet? I'm like, no, these things take time. Um, but I'm, I'm excited that they're excited and that they're still bringing it up a week later because obviously sometimes kids say things and then they forget about it and they don't care. Um, so those are the two projects that I'm primarily working on right now and loving them because I can both pick them up and set them down and not really have to worry about too much. Um, and you will not believe this, but I have some yarn acquisitions and these were gifted, um, which is just so nice. So one of my customers knew that from my previous videos, how much I really wanted to use um, Nutidin yarn, but it's not the easiest to come by. And she, told me a while ago, um, Jackie is her name, she told me that she had quite the extensive stash and she would love to surprise me and give me some. So she came to pick up a yarn order because um, very fortunate that she lives close and she left me a surprise in my mailbox and what? Like. Oh, they're so beautiful. Like, look at these colors. So, I don't know what I am going to make. Maybe a hat? Maybe a hat and mittens? Um, I'm very excited. This pink, like, I don't think it's registering very well on camera, but this pink actually has flecks of the orange in it, and it's just, that's so pretty. So, thank you, Jackie. I am so excited. I can't, I'm like, oh, what am I gonna make? Um, so I really, I really appreciate you sharing your stash with me. It was very, very kind of you. And now I need to figure out what to make. And I have to buy a new winter jacket this year. I basically wore my winter jacket into the ground last year, like uh, the zipper broke and I was literally having to step in and out of it um, by March, so. I'm gonna have to like pick a winter coat that's gonna go with all of these accessories that I wanna knit this year because let's be honest, um, 
it's nice to knit new hats and mitts. I've never actually knit mitts, but maybe this year is the year. Um, so thank you for that. And then my friend Bailey, um, who you know I've talked about multiple times, gifted me some really beautiful yarn. And uh, so this is from Erin of Coast to Coast Yarn Company. Yeah, Coast to Coast Yarn Company. Um, I've been following Erin's journey for quite a while now. And it's just, I love everything that she does. And so she has started offering non-superwash yarn. And I only knit with non-superwash yarn. And so Bailey surprised me. And these are from, I think these are from her, her mush club order. Um, pre-order, but this is her 100% untreated extra fine merino. Um, it's a four ply, it's fingering weight, 437 yards and 100 grams each. And Erin is located in Kansas. And so I have, this is Button, and I don't think I'm going to say this right, Cortinarius. I think that's right. Um, so Bailey got me these. And how perfect is this combo? <laughs> um, so this I think is going to be another accessory. Maybe like a, a shawl or a scarf. I don't have the best track record with knitting shawls, but this is like butter. It is so freaking soft and it's non-superwash. So I'm very excited. This is my first coast to coast yarn. I definitely don't think it's going to be my last. Um, I can't wait. Erin just got a new studio space. Um, she's moving and expanding and I just can't wait. So thank you Bailey and Erin, these are beautiful. Um, so those are my yarn acquisitions, um, which I think is like the first yarn acquisitions I've really had this year. I don't, I think besides the sock sets that I shared back in January, February, and March, I think that's it. And now it's books. Um, I just want to say that I collect points. I have gift cards, but I also don't really buy anything for myself besides books. So I understand that not everybody has the budget to spend money on books, but I love a physical book. I also, I've read a crap ton of stuff on my Kindle, on Kindle Unlimited. So, um, and I, I go to the library and I, 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 I'll do all of that stuff too, but I know that I'm very privileged to have the, the budget to spend my money on my books. So, um, I don't even know where to start. I think I'm going to start with the July haul. No, the June haul. June. Yes, this is the June haul. Um, and I'm, I think I'm just going to like rapid fire this because, uh, there's a lot of books. We're not there yet. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, um, so I went on a bit of a TikTok binge book talk, and um, there's a lot of these. Maybe I'll do, yeah, we're gonna do the TikTok ones after. Um, so I'll start with one of my, uh, one of my special edition ones. This is from, uh, this was an Owl Crate edition. Um, Together We Burn by Isabel Ibanez. This is the copy. The end papers are really, really fun. They almost look like scales. That's just the letter from the author. And then it has like the custom inside dust jacket and then the custom foiling on the book. 
if you've never seen like the special edition owl crate stuff, um, it's really, really beautiful. And I'll be talking a little bit more about the owl crate stuff um, at the end of the video, but they always, it's always a signed edition. So this was a special edition that I received and now I can put it on my shelf with my other ones. Um, and then, yeah, let's just, let's just get started. Um, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I, my first Emily Henry book that I read was Book Lovers. Wow. It was so good. So I immediately went out and bought this one because I already had Beach Read. So that was a no-brainer. Um, I love Tessa Bailey. Uh, Tessa Bailey, if you ever see this, I love you. I love everything that you do. So I picked up Fix Her Up because it's actually really hard to find any of her books in bookstores because obviously she's very well loved. Um, so I believe this is part of a series. But anyways, love Tessa Bailey. Um, so I had to pick that up. Very excited. Um, I also picked up a copy of Bunny. I've seen mixed reviews on this, but I'm very intrigued. This is, um, from what I understand, more of like a thriller horror book. Don't have a lot of that. It's not a very big one. So I did toss it out to my book club as an option, but it didn't win. It didn't win the, uh, the votes but it was chosen as Book of the Year by Time Vogue, Electric Literature, and the New York Public Library. So that seems promising. Um, we'll get to those. <laughs> um, I picked up The Murder of Mr. Wickham because, I mean, I, Jane Austen is amazing so anything that any spin-off of Jane Austen I feel like is good like I've read I've, like earlier on in my reading days I read a lot of spin-off Jane Austen books and I loved them so I picked this up because it just sounded so fun I had actually applied to read an advanced readers copy of this didn't get it but this was at Costco for $13 so um, always check your Costco I picked up Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Uh, yeah, Reid. I've only ever read Daisy Jones by her, but I loved it. And I do have a bunch of her other books on my bookshelf. So I've seen this book popping up like crazy this year. Um, and I just really liked the setting. Like it's back in the 80s again. We're in 83. Um, it just sounds like a book that is going to transport me back to that time and I'm very excited to read that so I also picked up um I was dropping packages off at post office and they had some books set up and so I picked up Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmis um don't know a lot about this but again I've seen this book picking up a lot of traction and I'm easily influenced that way and then I went on a big TikTok binge. <clears throat> so all of most of these um, I found I found two of these at my bookstore, but the rest of them were ordered off of the unmentionable Amazon. So just I understand that not everybody likes Amazon, but um, so the first ones that I picked up are Ice Planet Barbarian by Ruby Dixon and Barbarian Alien. Um, these I got at Indigo and the I always, I've said this before, but it's always to me a very promising sign when the person that is cashing you out or the person that helps you s notices the books in your hand and is just like, you're going to love it. Um, she did warn me that there's a lot of trigger warnings with this. I already knew that. Um, so yeah. Uh, really excited to read these. I think that the, the cover art is just so fun. Um, so yes, could not resist when I saw those, especially in a store like Indigo. Um, 
And then the rest of these are from Amazon. So I picked up the Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaela Smeltzer. Um, <laughs> I love Emily McIntyre. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. And you know this because her Nevermore series, no, not Nevermore, her, what is it? Oh gosh. Yeah, it is not, no, Never After, I said Nevermore. Her Never After series, she has a fourth book coming out in February, I think. And it's Aladdin themed. <laughs> um, these, I love these books so, so much. So I have been slowly reading through some of her earlier work and I read another one um, that I think I previously talked about with where she wrote it with another author and it was like a small town um, like a tiny island off the coast of Portland Maine and there's like a, a thriller and there's murders and there's romance and the entire time I'm like where is this book going I don't know and I just so I love her writing so much so I got um, I think I got yeah I got book one and book two from her Sugar Lake series. So the first one is Beneath the Stars and the second one is Beneath the Stands. I think there's more than the two books too. Um, don't quote me on that, but I love Emily's writing. So I'm very, very excited to read these. Um, Funny thing, I buy these books and I want to get home and I want to read them right away, but then I also put them into stacks. Like, I literally had stacks sitting in this room because I want to keep them safe so that I remember what to talk about and what to show you. Um, and then it just haunts me. And then, and then I go through them again. Like, this is, these have been sitting here for two months waiting to be talked about so that I can finally read them. Um, I've also been reading a lot of Mariana Zapata. Um, I've let, I've loved some of it and I've not liked some of it. Like, um, one of the books I'm going to get to and talk about was one that I read when I went to Banff. Um, and I loved that one. And then I read another book, um, last month by her and it was good. Didn't love it. Um, so I picked up from Lukov with love. I've heard good things about this. Um, these are like a little bit out of my normal romance type of books because um, a lot of her books revolve around sports. So like one of the books that I read was soccer based. This one, there's an ice skate on the back so I'm going to assume that it has to do with ice skating. Um, and I think another one that I have is football. So we'll see. I'm going to take a chance. Um, but I do really like some of her books a lot. And then I also picked up, uh, what is this? I don't know the order. I love when books put the order. But anyways, I picked up The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Um, and it is a four book series. So we have The Simple Wild, Wild at Heart. This one is like a in-between book, like a 0.5. So this is Forever Wild. And then this one is Running Wild. Um, and I've heard really good things about these. I've read some other K.A. Tucker books that I they were good, um, just didn't love, like, you know, like I liked them, but I didn't love them. Um, so yeah, again, I'm all about taking risks and, you know, trying to give things an, a chance. I'm also, when it comes to TV shows for the longest time, if I started a show and I didn't like it, I still needed to see it all the way through just to see what happens. Like I, I have a really hard time leaving things unfinished. Same with like DNFing books. I have a really hard time DNFing. I have only DNF'd one book 
and it's book three in the Touch of Darkness series and it still irks me to the point where I've gone back to try and read it again two more times like I've just taken it out from the library and I still can't get through it but I I'm like it's still bugging me so I think by the end of this year I will go back and try and finish the book because I think I got like 70% and then I was just like what the hell am I reading um, and then the last book that I'm going to talk about for June's book haul is probably like the most exciting one ever. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, I've talked about the Plated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy before. I have the books on my shelf right here. Um, I applied for a physical art copy, did not think I was going to get it. I did get it. They sent me a whole package. I mean, it's not like a big thing. Like it was a book, some stickers, a letter, um, and it's been killing me that I haven't read this yet because I wanted to save it for the video, but I got glow and I'm so excited. I can't wait because book three ended on such a crazy cliffhanger. I consumed, I consumed these three books in three days. I listened to the first book. Do not listen to the audiobook. The the reader, the narrator person killed it for me and the first book is very very hard to get through. Um, there are a shit ton of trigger warnings in this and there's a lot of trauma written in these pages but I promise you it's it goes somewhere and it's worth it. And you have to start at rock bottom to get all the way back up to the top. These books are so good. Um, and so I listened to the audiobook of this. I then could not find an audiobook of this one. And I was like, how? And then I could, like, to get these on Amazon at the time would have cost me $40 a book. And I was like, I just can't justify that right now um they eventually came down in price so it worked out in the end that's why I picked them up but I ended this is what drove me to literally tell the family get in the car <laughs> we're going to the store and I'm buying a Kindle because I had a Kobo they were not available on Kobo because Kobo is run under Indigo and Indigo didn't sell the books so the only way I could get Book two and book three is to get a Kindle, and a Kindle has changed my life. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I went on a tangent there. This series is just so freaking good. So I'm very excited to read this. Like this has now officially moved up my list. Um, <laughs> I love these books. So yeah, that's my little tangent there. And my beautiful arc. I am so excited. It doesn't say that it's an arc, but I did get it before anybody else had it, so that's kind of cool. Um, so that's my June book haul. And then for the books that I read in June, I'm trying to remember which stack I made. Okay. Ooh. So June... What was June and what was July? I need to, I need to look. Okay, so June was a nine book month. I read, I did one audiobook and I did one Kindle book and the rest were all physical books, which was huge for me. Like I read all of these physically. I mean, you're consuming books the same way when you read them. Um, whether it's an audiobook or like obviously on a Kindle you're still reading pages but I just mean on a Kindle you're just holding one thing I literally could not stop so um, for June our book club um, for the Notary Society which is my book club we read book lover book lovers book lovers by Emily Henry five stars it was so good this book gave me a hangover um, the storyline, there was just so much, oh, there's so much, um, 
The banter between Nora and Charlie, I lived for the banter. I loved it. I loved the, how their relationship just blossomed and changed and I just, ugh. It, there was like moments where I'm like, you're just teasing me now, like this is so unfair. And then, yeah, it was fantastic. If you have not read this, what are you doing with your life? Um, yeah, five stars. I loved it so, so much. I also, um, so when I was saying that I read uh, Marianne is a Pada book, um, my friend and I went to Banff at the beginning of June for three days, and we both brought the same book, and we read the same book together, and it ended up being the most perfect book to read for the scenario that we were in. We were staying in a very beautiful motel um, in Banff. We went hiking, we were exploring the great outdoors. And this book, All Roads Lead Here, was very much the same. The main character um, is trying to basically, she lost her mother in a very tragic way and she's trying to like, you know, stay connected with her mother and feel like she still has a part of her with her. And so she goes back to their hometown after not living there for 10 years and she has some secrets and she decides that to try and become closer to her mother, to feel closer to her, she's going to do some of the hiking trails that her mom did because her mom was a big hiker. So it was a really perfect book to read and of course like the main love interest is kind of like a parks ranger type of person. Um, grumpy sunshine like he is so grumpy and she's just very much like happy-go-lucky like even though her life has been complete and utter crap and she's had to deal with horrible person after horrible person she's still somehow very happy so this was fantastic um i would i think i gave this four stars really really loved this one a lot um then i read <laughs> Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This book was so freaking good. Um, if you have not read It Happened One Summer, read that one. I think I loved this one more. Um, this was so good. I could not put this down. I consumed this so fast. Um, yeah. It was fantastic. For 4.5 stars loved it. Tessa, I love you so much. Um, then I read this series by Kate Stewart. I read Flock, Exodus, and The Finish Line. Um, big feelings. Flock was good. It's basically like your quintessential start of the mill this is the first book in a series type of thing. Like you're getting to know everybody, um, some shit goes down, and you're just like, what the hell? Um, this book broke me. I had to keep breaking because I, it was also ruined for me. People posted spoilers without saying spoiler alert. Um, and it broke me. I knew it was coming and so it was kind of like one of those things like you know when you have an appointment this is like the best way I can explain this is how I explained it to Nick because he's like you keep putting it down and like walking away and I was like it's because I know something is coming so it's like when you have an appointment and you wake up and say your appointment is at like one o'clock in the afternoon the entire morning is basically just a write-off because you spend your entire time waiting and you know and you're anticipating and so it just kind of throws you so this it was fantastic but it broke me um yeah a lot of big feelings um and then the third book was just kind of good for me um a lot of people have said that this series is like you know 10 stars i it was good i'm glad that i read it um this kind of like ties up things and there's like a big crazy cliffhanger that I didn't really see coming, um, which I think is a really great thing. Um, I did take my time with this book. Um, 
it kind of at some I I understand why they did it but you know sometimes when you're just like I didn't need all that extra stuff in there just like you know cut it all out and let's get to the the end that's how I kind of felt about this book um, so yeah I read this series in June and then I finished June off with a banger my killer vacation by Tessa Bailey um, <laughs> and it is the signed copy yeah um, this was so good this is another book that I could not put down um, it was fantastic I think I read it in like a day and a half um, so good I love you Tessa how many times can I say that? Um, the audiobook that I listened to is The Kingdom of the Cursed, which I believe is the second book. Yeah, The Kingdom of the Cursed, which is the second book in The, King, uh, the Kingdom of the Wicked. And that is by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, it's a fiction, fantasy, historical book um I loved it it's great I love the I I'm so I've listened to the audiobooks for both of them and I will say that the reader the narrator does an amazing job I, like absolutely love it um it's really well done um I think what I also really love is that they blend the two like they blend the fantasy world part of it into like the real world and you know uh, it takes place in Sicily in most parts of the book and they talk about food and I'm just like <laughs> your mouth is watering like oh I want to go and eat this food now um, so it's fantastic I really loved it um, and then I also on my Kindle I read the takeover which is part of the Miles High Club series by T.L. Swan it's book two I read this while I was in Banff. I read this one on my Kindle. Um, I gave it four and a half stars. The whole entire series, I ended up getting my friend to read the books, and they are all so freaking good. And book four comes out later this month, and I can't wait. Like, we are, we were just texting the other night. She's like, it's this month. Can you believe it's this month already? I'm like, I know. Um, so yeah, I'm getting way too excited. Uh, very excited about that. And then now, more books. Are you excited? Um, I have a problem, but you know what? It's a good problem. It's healthy, right? Mm hmm Okay. Can you believe that's my first coffee? Um, let's see. Let's start with a book haul. And then we will talk about the books that I read because last month was a very heavy Kindle month. Um, but that's okay because we love the Kindle. Kindle is great. Um, so I have actually quite a few special editions that I've received. Um, and I'm going to talk more about the book subscription stuff because I know um, it's like one of those things that I was really hesitant to, to to try them because I was like, what if I don't like the book or what if I don't know anything about the book or what if, oh boy, what if, um, what if I don't like the stuff that I get? So I'm going to talk to you about that after, but this is my book haul for July. <laughs> so exciting. Um, so we're just going to rapid fire these. Um, so as I said, uh, Mariana Zapata, I got this one which is called The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. And this is a football one. And I'm assuming that because it's The Wall of Winnipeg, it's Canadian, um, which is kind of fun. So uh, yeah, found this one at Indigo, which was super random because I've never seen any of her stuff at Indigo before. So maybe that's a promising sign. Um, but yeah, so another sports romance type of thing. Again, not usually my thing, but we're gonna we're gonna try. Um, this was one of my anticipated new releases, and this is Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. 
I have seen amazing things about this book. Um, I still have to read The Wolf and the Woodsman. It's up there on my shelf. Um, so yeah, got that one. Very excited. <laughs> I got uh, Wait For It by Jen McKinley. I don't know a lot about this book. I had actually looked at this when I was at Indigo, and then I went to HomeSense which is kind of like a home goods store, if you're not familiar with HomeSense in Canada. Um, at Indigo, this would have cost me $23, and I got this at HomeSense for $6.99. So if you live in Canada and you have a HomeSense, go to HomeSense, check the, the areas. They had um, Emily Henry books for $12. It was fantastic. So could not resist. I am in a huge romance reading kick right now, which you're going to see in a moment um, when I talk about what I read last month. I also picked up this book, um, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I've been seeing a lot of talk about this book, um, and Nick expressed that he would also be interested in reading this. He's very into reading thrillers and horror books, so I picked this up because I was like, maybe it's something that we can both read and then talk about it after, which could be fun. Um, I got The Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfeld. Um, this takes place in 1768 and it says on the front, two queens with a powerful secret will enchant the age. And it is a Marie Antoinette retelling type of situation. And I was like, I can't not get this because this year I'm doing a yarn calendar um, that is inspired by Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette. Um, so I thought this could be like a really fun one to consume. It's also a beast of a book. Like, she, she thick. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. Um, so it says here, Charlotte, daughter of the Habsburg Empress, arrives in Naples to marry a man she has never met. Her sister, Antoine, is set is sent to France and in the mirrored corridors of Versailles they rename her Marie Antoinette. So it's very exciting to me to be able to read a story about the two sisters. Um, so yes, I got that one. I also got um, my friend Bailey, who I already talked about, um, wants to read or I know she wants to read, but she was like, maybe it would be a fun literary society pick. So I picked up Bear Town. I've heard really, really good things about this. This is by Frederick Bachman. Um, yeah. I believe it's a two-part book. So then there's a second one called Us Against You, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is no, this isn't a new book. Um, and I've seen nothing but amazing things about his work. So I'm very excited to add this to my collection. And Nick will want to read that too, which is kind of great. I also picked up a season for Second Chances by Jenny Bayliss. Um, they said that I'd, the cover really drew me to it, and then the back when I read it. Um, I think one of the things that I struggle with in terms of a lot of romance books is the characters are always, you know late teens, early 20s, mid 20s. They're never in their, thir they're very rarely in their 30s. And so what I tend to do in my mind is I kind of like age them if they're younger, whereas this is kind of like that scenario where, um, you know, her kids are grown up. Um, she's just left a 26 year marriage. She's, you know, trying to find herself again. Um, but it's set kind of like in December, so I thought this could be like a really fun book to read over winter, maybe like towards Christmas time, because I've never done that before. I've never read like a Christmas themed book. Um, I also picked up a copy, this was another book that was an anticipated read, but The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I believe that's what that says. Um, yeah, I've, again, I've heard really good things. I had applied to be an advanced reader for this, did not get it, so I'm really excited that I was able to add that to my, um, this one, I don't know anything about it, it just sounded 
so cool but it's called the siren by Catherine st john um so this kind of takes place in um it takes place in the summer it's kind of like you know hollywood's most notorious faces are assembled on the idyllic caribbean island to film a movie called the siren um and it starts a dangerously handsome megastar Cole Power playing opposite his ex-wife Stella Rivers. The surefire blockbuster promises to entice audiences with its sultry storyline and intimately connected cast. Um, there are three very different women arrive on set, each with their own motive. So you have Stella, who is the ex-wife. There's um, Taylor, a fledgling producer. And then there's Felicity, Stella's mysterious new assistant. And so it just kind of sounds like everything is set up. It's like a recipe for disaster. So it just sounds like it's going to be a really fun book to read. Um, so I couldn't resist that. I also picked up um, The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. Um... An indie musician reeling from tragedy and a public breakdown reconnects with her father on a week-long cruise in this soul-stirring novel from, from best-selling author Jennifer E. Smith. So this just sounded like a good book. Uh, what, what more can I say? <laughs> um, what else? I got Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mendel. Um, I follow some book influencer people um and one of them is regan of the peruse project peruse what is she what's her name i know it's regan reagan reagan peruse yeah i was right peruse project um she has a YouTube channel where she talks about all the books that she reads and this was an anticipated release for her and then she read it and she said that it, it like exceeded her expectations. So I needed to see what, was, what it was all about. Um, this is a book that, what does it say here? Um, a novel of art, time, love, and plague that takes the readers from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon nearly 500 years later, unfurling a story of humanity across centuries and space. Like, yes please. So, I also put this one forward as a Knitter Society pick, I believe. But nobody voted for this one. But maybe now they will. We'll see. Time will tell. I picked up this book, um, Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. This is, I think, kind of like, um, it kind of cuts between two different timelines. So there's the suburbs right now in the city back then. And it is a thriller slash fantasy book. I'm very excited to read this. I've seen this starting to pop up a little bit more. Like I said, I think it's pretty new. I think it just came out. Yes, it just came out. Um, and it is a YA, but Melissa Albert has written The Hazel Wood, The Night Country, and Tales from Hinterland. I believe I own The Hazel Wood. Um, so, I'm excited to read this. And then finally, this one's kind of like a an out there book for me to buy. But I was influenced from uh, TikTok. This is a book that came out originally in like 1924. It is Kane's Jawbone, um, and it's called A Novel Problem by Torquemada. Um, the world's most fiendly, fiendlish, fiendishly <laughs> difficult literary puzzle. Um, so this is essentially a finished book. This is what it looks like. It's not in order. So you basically have to create 
the puzzle um, or put the puzzle together. And so, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, so 1934 when it was first, no, 1924? Nine, okay, so 1934, a prize of 15 pounds was offered to the first reader who could reorder the pages and provide an account of the six persons murdered in Kane's jawbone and the full names of their murderers. So it's kind of like a clue. Like, how cool is that? Um, to coincide with this paperback reissue, Unbound is reviving the competition, offering a prize to any readers who provide the names of the murdered and their murderers, the correct order of the pages, and a short explanation of how the solution was obtained. The winners will receive £250 or $350 to spend supporting other book projects at unbound.com. The competition will close on the 31st of December, 2022. There's literally like an answer page that you fill out and I'll show you. So you're supposed to literally cut out the pages and solve the freaking mystery. Like how cool is that? Um, Yeah, I'm just, it's, I think it is such a fantastic idea. Um, and what's like really crazy about it is that the top of the pages are numbered. And so these are all in order, but the story is not in order. So it's like a mind game. Yeah, so I picked this up. I couldn't resist. Um, I think it's so cool. And then on the back it says, please note this puzzle is extremely difficult and not for the faint-hearted. I love puzzles. I don't think I'm gonna get to this before the end of this year, but I think that this is such a unique idea. Um, and it even says on the back, a unique hybrid of word puzzle and whodunit. Um, yeah, six murders, 100 pages, millions of possible combinations, but only one is correct. Can you solve this murder mystery? I would love to know what you think of this, so let me know in the comments below. Um, and then I have special editions um, that I'm really excited to share with you. So... Let's start with some Lumicrate. This one is, I think, the one that I was really the most excited about. Um, so a Lumicrate typically comes with sprayed edges. So the edges kind of match the vibe of the book. And the book is called The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd Jones. And on the back it says, oceans will rise, a kingdom will fall. And it's just how beautiful that is and that's just the dust jacket um, and then this is the foiling which is stunning and then the dust jacket is reversible and it's beautiful look at that so these additions are they come obviously at a bit more of a cost, um, but I think that they are such special works of art to have. And it's really cool because they do come signed. So she signed this one. And I love when they sign it with like a themed color to the marker. So like she chose blue because the rest of the book is blue. Um, the other one that I have received from them is called We All Fall Down by Rose Zabo. Um, and this one I think is just also so beautiful. So this is the cover. And these covers are different from like the mass produced covers, the normal ones that you would find in store. Um, the inside is really simple. There's not much to the foiling. There's no reversible dust jacket on this one. There's her signature, and then the, end, the sprayed edges, which are just so cool. 
Um, so that is the two from Illumicrate. And then I also have these two. This one I believe is my, I'm gonna say that this one is my Owl Crate edition. But of course it's not really telling me. But this is called Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Shen. Chen. Um, it's beautiful. Full of purples and you can see like there's parts that are glossy versus matte. On the back it says, Kings and Curses, Girls and Gods, these are the makings of tales. Um, the end papers on the inside, so pretty. And then the foiling, like they went all out on this. So beautiful. And it's a reversible dust jacket. So there's a lot going on with this one. I feel like this is the one it was supposed to be signed, but it was not signed. So that was the only bummer. Um, but everything else is just so beautiful. And then the other one that I have here is from Fairy Loot. This is my, yeah, my Fairy Loot exclusive. Um, and this one is This Vicious Grace by Emily Thede. And the colors on this book are really interesting to me. Um, it's like so different, but yellows and there's lemons and then it's got sprayed edges and I don't know if you can see the sprayed edges are lemons as well. And then when you open it up, the inside, I keep making that sound. Um, so the inside, it's a brown hardback with gold foiling, nothing on the back side. And then the end papers are just stunning. Like, hello, love it. Um, and then she signed with a gold Sharpie. So I have about eight months um, of these book subscriptions under my belt now. And I'm going to show you an example of what a full box looks like because I have switched to um, the only one that does not currently offer book only is Owl Crate. So I've switched my Fairy Loot and my Illumicrate to receiving just the book and none of the extra doodads that come inside of a book. Um, but to show you an example of what comes in one of the boxes. So this is like an Illumicrate box when I was receiving their full boxes. And this one was actually pretty, pretty good. Um, so this was the July 2022 20, one. So I received a full beach towel, which, I mean, nothing wrong with that, right? Um, I also received this is a toothbrush holder and I'll tell you so everything is inspired by different books and there's different like trope themes and things like that so the towel is beneath the waves towel um, and it is a folk of the air inspired microfiber towel I got um, a night spire travel toothbrush holder and it comes with the toothbrush so it's like a eco-friendly toothbrush and then it has a little engraved artwork on it then it also came with when I say that this one was really good it, like I pretty much liked everything that it came with I got uh, black Sun straw set which each metal straw is representing the clans from the Black Sun, I guess, as a book. I'm not familiar with it. Um, but we've got Carrion Crow, which is like a thicker one. So you could have this with like a smoothie or maybe even with boba, which would be great. Um, Water Strider, Golden Eagle, and Winged Serpent. And they're gold on one end and colored on the other. Um, and then it came with a cleaner and then a little case. And then I also received a glass water bottle. 
Um, and I think this is Flow Like a River Water Bottle. Um, I want to say that this is probably to coincide with the book, because um, the book that I received with this is this one, Drowned Woods. Uh, but yeah, so these are some of the things that you get. I have so many bookish items now and things that like, they're all so beautiful and so pretty, but realistically, there's just things that I'm never going to use. So I thought that it would be fun to do a couple of bundled giveaways. Um, and I'll send some of the things out to you guys. So if that is something that interests you and you want to enter your name into the draw, I guess you could say, I'm going to do two bundles and each bundle will have, let's say six items each. Um, like this video, subscribe would be nice, but drop me a comment and tell me a book that you're most excited to read before the end of this year. And I'll pick a winner later this month and then we'll figure out all of the other stuff. Um, so those are the books that I picked up in July. And then the books that I read in July, I think I also read, let me go to my, my story graph here. In July, I also read nine books, but like I said, a lot of them were on my Kindle. Um, so the physical book that I did read was the Cartographers by Peng Shepherd. Um, this was our Knittery Society book. I read this in tandem with listening to the audiobook, and the audiobook was fantastic. This book was fantastic. Um, the mystery and the intrigue, it kept me guessing. There was moments where I was like trying to solve the mystery with them of the cartographers, and I was I felt like I was entering into the conversation with them like they would be talking amongst themselves and then I would be like oh what about this or whatever um, this was fantastic I loved it um, if you have not read this I would give it a shot it was so cool I'm also so intrigued about cartography now and I'm like hmm, maybe I want to start collecting maps I don't know um, it was fantastic I loved it and then Everything else was essentially on my Kindle or um, an audiobook. So I read The X Hex by Aaron Sterling. Um, I loved it. And the second book is coming out soon, I think. Um, so I think it's going to be like a good transition from reading just like straight up romance books, which is what I've been doing a lot lately, um, into, you know, like getting into spooky season and stuff like that. But I loved the XX. I thought it was great. Um, I read or I listened to, I took this out from the library, but I listened to Just Haven't Met You Yet by so Sophie Cousins. And it was so good. It was so lighthearted. Um, it was medium paced. It's a romance. It's um, part British, but you end up in New Jersey, and it's like kind of one of those whimsical plot lines where she works for an editing company, and she needs to like write a story, and so she ends up in New Jersey, and then it's just, yeah, I loved it. Um, my battery's gonna die. Don't die yet. Um, I'm gonna rapid fire these off. I read Praise by Sarah Kate, WTF, I don't know what I was doing reading that. Um, I read The Misters, oh, I read The Casanova, which is the third book in the Mouse High Club. Freaking loved it. Five stars. The best one ever. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, I read The Worst Best Man by Lucy Score. Also loved that book. That was kind of like a, what am I reading right now? But in a really good way. Um, I also read... Mr. Spencer, Mr. Garcia, and Mr. Masters, which is part of um, the Mr. series by T.L. Swan. 
all really good, all kind of in the same boat of like, what am I reading right now? But very good. Enjoyed them. I read them with my friend Maggie. Um, and then I read Colty by Mariana Zapata. Um, it was good. Didn't love it. A soccer based one. And that's what I read. That's my rapid fire. Um, so yes. Uh, anyways, thank you so much. I'm going to try and beat the battery here. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more videos, subscribe. Maybe you don't have to. That's fine too. Um, I hope that you're having a great summer. Can you believe that school is back in one month? Wow.